the progression is you have living beings that ultimately emerge from these processes. Some of those living beings acquire some degree of conscious self-awareness, conscious self-reflection. And the very same conundrum that furrowed the brows of scientists in the 1800s comes to the fore here again because you can just articulate the same question but swap out some words. How can mindless, thoughtless particles come together in a configuration that somehow yields the inner sensation of thought, feeling, emotion? How can they possibly generate that if they themselves don't have any intrinsic version of those conscious qualities from the get-go? Now, some people respond much as those in the past did with life. They say those particles can't create consciousness on their own. There has to be something else, a consciousness field that we somehow tap into, or the particles themselves made themselves have a little proto-conscious quality. So the electron might have electric charge and mass and quantum mechanical David spin. David Chalmers. David Chalmers' idea, exactly. Yeah. Quanta. And in addition to the properties of particles that we are familiar with, maybe they have a little bit of consciousness. And when you put a lot of them together, you get a lot of consciousness, and that's what we are. My own feeling, and there's no proof to this, but my own feeling is that we are recapitulating the same story with life, and that at some point, when we fully understand or better understand the brain and mind, we will no longer invest such mystery in the emergence of consciousness. We'll look back at these days and kind of quaintly smile at the ideas that were put forward, and we will recognize, as we do with life, that consciousness is nothing but particles coursing through a gloppy gray in our particular structure head, and within that motion, those particles generate the conscious sensations that we all experience. To my mind, when you describe consciousness in the manner that we have just now, I don't think that in any way diminishes consciousness. Some have had these conversations. You know, I remember having an onstage discussion of this sort a couple years ago, and when this discussion of consciousness happened, someone in the back yelled out, you're describing hell! You know, and it's like, and, and, and I get it, because if we're used to thinking of consciousness as this pristine, spectacular quality that we are endowed with from something magical in the external world, to frame it in a reductionist way can feel like you're flattening it. However, I think it's utterly spectacular that the very same physical processes that are responsible for this pitcher of water or the structure of this table is what's responsible for conscious self-awareness. How miraculous that collections of particles can do and think and feel what we do. That, I think, is the conclusion. It amplifies and elevates the wonder of it all. It doesn't take away from it. 